this video, I'll be discussing whether or not parental controls or parental monitoring is best for your family. And remember to stick around to the end because I love to leave tips, resources, advice to make sure that we're making protecting your kids online way more simple. So if you're serious about this, stick until the end. First, let's define our terms. Parental monitoring is basically when you're spying on your kids. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and well, I mean, technically speaking, it is spying. You're monitoring their internet, their online activity. What are they doing? Who are they talking to? What actions are they taking? Some apps let you see everything in real time. Sometimes they have like a privacy filter where you only see things that are that you need to pay attention to. So maybe they mention a certain keyword that you're looking out for, that if they mention that, that particular word that you're gonna get an alert for it so that you know that your kids are engaging in X, Y, and Z type of conversation. And so those things do exist, but it's basically when you're monitoring their usage and you are seeing what they're doing online. Parental controls means when you are creating boundaries and filters and what they can see and do online. So it's not like you're monitoring what they're doing, but if say a game allows your kid to chat with strangers online, then you can put a parental control where they're unable to chat with other people online. So you're not exactly seeing what they're saying and any given moment or seeing what they're doing or how much time they're spending or whatever it is, but you're controlling the environment that you're in so that you're making it more kid-friendly or your family appropriate. That is the difference between parental controls and parental monitoring. When it comes to parental controls, they're typically really free. They're available in all of the apps, the devices, the internet that you have, the router that you have. You can get certain parental controls for free that just come with it, or you pay like in a slight additional cost, but typically it is completely free. So you see that a lot with apps that are geared towards more children or they have a children audience. So say social media apps or gaming apps or certain devices for your Apple or your Android or your Windows computer or whatever it is, they have a family center or a parental control center to make the experience easier for you so that you can control the environment that your kids are in. Parental monitoring companies are typically third party companies that are monitoring what your kids are doing. So that's something that you have to install in addition to whatever device or app that you have because typically companies do not have some deep parental monitoring and they typically only give you a bunch of controls in terms of making the app a little bit more safe for your kids. I'm not saying that you'll never see it as a native app or a native feature within whatever application or device, it's just less likely and you're most likely gonna find it in a third party. One of the most popular apps as a third party app, monitoring and control app is Quiz Studio and they have a lot of features for all phones, all devices and you can use an app like that you can pay a monthly or yearly fee to monitor and to control the environments of the devices and the apps that your kids are using which one should you choose so you do a parental control app should you do a parental monitoring app they're typically honestly in the same one sometimes should you do something that's native to an app where it's free or should you pay for something it honestly depends on your family your situation what's best for you how old your kids are how much you know about security and safety it really depends and this is why I'm making this video so that you can have a you can make a decision with you and your family as an online safety educator if you don't know who I am yet I'm cyber Frida I'm an award-winning Forbes 30 under 30 online safety educator this is my channel so if you're not subscribed then you must subscribe no, I'm kidding <laughs> you must subscribe <laughs> you don't have to subscribe but if you're a parent that wants to protect your kids online and you want a simple way to do it you want a holistic way a big picture way to do it then my channel is definitely one so you can subscribe if you want to join the community however if you want to protect your kids online what i wanted to say is you must use holistic online safety meaning giving your kids the freedom they want and the safety and security that they need. That means you're having a harmony between your communication, your relationship with your kids, parental monitoring, parental controls. And so I did wanna bring that into the conversation because there's obviously a little bit of a, mm, what type of app should I be using? How do I research the app? How do I know this app is actually safe for my kids? Because there have been apps in the, in the past, in the present too as well, we don't really know things until there's an investigation done. So some of these apps say that they're like parental monitoring companies for your children and that it it 
they're not really prioritizing your kid's safety and security in mind. What do I, what do I mean by that? I mean that if you're putting a parental monitoring a app inside of your kid's devices and the company that provides that parental monitoring service is not, at, not having security and safety and privacy at the forefront in protecting your kid's information, if they were to be hacked into or if they're selling that information from your kids to other companies and now people can know their activities and who they are and all of those type of things. So you want to be mindful about what company am I using? Do they care about security and privacy? Or are they just really trying to take, take my money? Whatever that is. What I want you to do is think about your values as a family. What aligns and what are you trying to do? How old are your kids and how mature are your kids? That will allow you to figure out something that works best for your family. Typically, when you have younger kids, I mean, I'm gonna, when I talk about kids, I'm going to define my terms. So when you have a kid that's 12 years old and younger, so they're not in their preteens, or not preteens, so they're not like the 13 up until 18. When they're like 12 and younger, you're gonna, you're gonna have a little bit more monitoring, a little bit more parental controls because they are completely, they're like a kid, 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 and they're most likely, no matter who they are, no matter how awesome they are, they're not as mature to navigate the space without um, as much parental involvement so when they're really young you want to be sure that you have some type of parental I like to call it parental restrictions or parental filter because control feels like control even though it's really just making sure the environment's safe for your kids because if you're just letting your kids on the a gaming site right or you're letting them on social media and they're younger than 12 they're gonna have less than ideal situations even if they're above uh, 12. They could be 13, 14, 15, 16 having really terrible experiences online and older than that. But typically when they're younger, it's even more detrimental because they're going to run into things that they have no business seeing and you really need to make sure that in order for the, the environment to be safe that you have parental controls. As they get older, it starts to be a little bit more relaxed depending on their situation. I always say that yes, my niche, my expertise is safety for kids and safety for teens. However, you are the expert in your kids. There is nothing that I can say that will override your instincts, your gut feeling, your experiences that you have with your kids. Now, if I'm talking about something that's strictly safety or strictly security, you, I mean, it's, it has, it applies to everyone typically across the board, but there are gray areas. Nothing is really black and white. So you have to see from this video or from asking a question in the comments below, messaging me or whatever, having a discussion with me, discussion with yourself, with your kids, with your partner, whoever else in your, your family or your friend circle or someone that you trust, a counselor, therapist, whatever it is, to help you make a decision that's best for you and your family. Because again, there is no one size fits all. But typically as kids reach 13, 14, 15, 16, now we're getting in that age range where they want a little bit more freedom and they do need freedom, they do need your guidance in a different way and they do need you to be there every step of the way but not in every single thing that they do is being monitored so you want to have that balance between what you're monitoring what you're controlling and then what are you allowing them to experience and you're there by them by by their side because by the time they leave your household you want them to have the techniques the tools the resources the methods the guys to actually protect themselves because once they go off to college they're going to need to know how do i protect myself from grooming how do i protect myself from a predator or a hacker how do i make sure that i have a safe and secure environment internally and externally so you want to be there as a guide every step of the way so that once their wings are flying they can do these stuff on their own when trying to strike the balance between am i spying on my kids is that going to destroy my kids trust you want to be sure that you're doing what's best for your kids first and you're working on your relationship with your kids as the foundation and not just the tools. The biggest thing is you do not want to ever install parental monitoring on your kids devices without them knowing that it's there. And that's a huge, huge, huge thing. It's like they're like, well, if, if a lot of parents will tell me, well, if they don't know, then what they don't know can't hurt them. You may think that they don't know, but they're most likely going to know. And then even if let's just say that they don't know and something happens, now you have to bring up a conversation because if you see something, you're going to have to say something and correct the behavior. So if you see something that they did and you start to have a conversation with them and they didn't know you're monitoring them, now you really did destroy the trust because now they're like, you were monitoring me? Like what in the world? I didn't know that. And so now it's an awkward conversation versus I'm giving you this phone. This is my phone. I'm paying for 
for this phone. This phone has parental controls and parental monitoring features. Until you leave my house and get your own job and get your own phone, all of your activities online, I will have the ability to see it. I may not be checking it every day, but I'm gonna see it and I have the ability to see it. So now they're in the mind frame of that's exactly what's gonna happen when I have this type of phone. That's a way better conversation than you having to let them know that you've been monitoring them for a couple of years. I said at the beginning, everything is not black and white. There's a gray area. So there are times where I have seen where there are extenuating circumstances, there are extreme circumstances where a parent does have to pr have parental monitoring on their kids' devices and their kids don't know because it is for their own safety. And it's more, it's easier or it's better in the long run to potentially break your kids' trust than to just really try to keep them safe. So like I said, you're the expert in your situation. I highly recommend recommend that you have multiple people a part of the decision on whether or not you're going to monitor your kids and you do want to have that open honest discussion with your kids to tell them why you're doing it don't just say I put parental monitoring because it's my phone and I do what I want give them an understanding of why you're doing that because what we're trying to do is prepare them for a world where they're gonna to have to protect themselves as much as we don't want anything to happen to them we want to protect them from everything they need to understand how do I take my online safety, online security, online privacy into my own hands and I can protect myself when I leave the house. You do not want them to become a kid in a candy shop. You don't want them to feel like I'm sneaking around my parents because they don't trust me. You have to build that foundation of connection because no matter how much you're monitoring your kids or how much control that you have or you think that you have on your kids, they can become real sneaky if you are not developing that parental connection and that parental safe space that they need to develop into full healthy and awesome human beings. I've seen it work for some parents if they decide look I am checking in every once a month or I'm only checking in when I feel like a behavior has changed something's happening I'm not liking what I'm seeing I'm gonna need to investigate to see what's going on that's the only time they check so that they're leaving that that trust fact. This is what holistic online safety means so after you're thinking about all of that you also want to think about yourself so we often talk about about the kids and are the kids mature enough are they what what's going on with the kids how are they feeling blah blah but you have to think about yourself as a parent am I ready to put this much monitoring or this much control on my kid if I'm not in the space right if you're not in the space to uh, to, to dedicate time because this takes time it doesn't have to take a long time you can you know go research the app that you want to get buy it put it on the computer set it up but you have to check it every now and then you have to make sure it's updated it has really good security other people can't get into the account because if you're monitoring your kid, if someone has access to your, your account, they can monitor your kids too. So we've had situations where predators or hackers hack into the parent's account and they start monitoring their kids and harassing the kids because the parents don't have effective security and safety into their accounts. That's exactly why I started the Safe Kids Movement. The link is in the uh, description, the first link in the description, where I teach parents security and safety, understanding it in a simple way so that you don't, you're not putting all of these things in your kid's life but you don't know how to control it in in a safe and secure manner the conversations are complex for a reason because there are so many layers of privacy and security and safety you have to think about when it comes to monitoring your kids online and if you're doing it correctly and all of that so it's really important that you get the help that you need so if you have any questions about this topic let me know below whoever you are because it allows me to see what you need from me and how I can support you best if you have been getting value from this video please click the like button smack the like button pop the like button let other parents know that this video is valuable so that it can spread to more parents if you're worried about the investment that it takes to put into parental controls or parental monitoring there are plenty of companies that have a plenty of investment ranges ranges that can fit in many many different budgets you do not have to worry about that there are many different ways that you can put parental controls I mentioned inside of the devices but you can have it inside of apps and you also can have it on your internet at large you can have it on your router many internet companies Companies, internet service providers they have solutions for parents if you want to input certain security safety and parental measures into your household so always check those first as a way to figure out how you can create a safe environment for your kids super important that you figure out what you can handle and what you can consistently handle oftentimes you might download something and it's hard for you to upkeep or it's really hard to install or it's really hard to download or it's not very seamless so you want to make sure you're choosing something that works for your mental health too because this is something that you're gonna have to consistently use consistently operate and upkeep not only do you have to
to choose the solution that's best for your kids, but you also have to choose a solution that's best for yourself, your mental health, and your kids' mental health as well. You also want to, as your kids are older, you want to prioritize your kids and your teens, particularly your teens' sense of privacy and safety. It is so important that they believe that you trust them. If they have done something to break your trust and you have to could create some certain measures, that's what you gotta do. That's like, <laughs> like I said, there are gray areas and there are areas where things change, right? But you do want to prioritize your teens privacy and safety and sense of self and understanding that my parents trust me i have given them no reason not to trust me please 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 be sure that no matter what you implement in your kids or teens life whether it's parental controls or parental monitoring whatever you've decided based off of our quick discussion here what's best for you that you always prioritize conversation and connection and healing yourself and connecting with your kids and creating a safe non-judgmental open space where they can talk to you. You don't have to be the best of friends, but you do want to have a healing and safe space for your kids because that's what really, really matters at the end of the day. I made an entire video about parental controls and parental controls do not work unless you have a certain environment in your household. If you want to learn more about that, which I'm pretty sure you do because you clicked on this video and you watched it to the end right here, I highly recommend that you check that video out right now.